Hi guys, it's been a little over two weeks since I started my full-time RV adventure, which is also my first time RV adventure. Um, there's been quite a few ups and downs here. This has been a, um, a journey in adaptation, I would say that. And a lot of it has to do with everything that's going on in the country right now. And some of it is just kind of the growing pains of learning the whole RV lifestyle. Um, you know, the setup, the takedown, all of that stuff. <clears throat> so a couple of the big things I'd like to update on is I was going to do uh, South Dakota as my domicile state. And I am actually here in Rapid City and I've been here since the 13th. The today is what the 18th, Nine, 17th is today. <laughs> Actually, okay, yeah, that's that's kind of how it's going. Um, <clears throat> basically, South Dakota is kind of a mess as far as the the government stuff goes with all that's going on. So, for driver's licenses, you have to make a reservation to be able to go in and get your driver's license. In the past, people would say it'd take you about 20 minutes. Um, now most places are a month wait before you can even get in to get your driver's license. Fortunately today, a slot actually opened up in Rapid City. And so the 24th, I'm going in to get my driver's license. I got here on the 13th. I have to wait till the 24th before I can go in to get my driver's license. Other than that, I was going to have to go to some place in the eastern part of the state to get something this month and that would have been the 30th so i got lucky if this you know holds um yeah an entire month so if you're planning to come here to do your domicile make an appointment for the dmv before you even leave because it's it's a mess right now vehicle registrations i am at america's mailbox This is where my, you know, domicile place is kind of set up. They will take care of your registration because you can't go into the DMV. You have to do everything by mail. Uh, so using their service is, is a big help. Uh, they help figure out, you know, the fees and all of that stuff. So it's actually going to cost me about $650 to register my truck and trailer. And part of that is because I didn't pay enough tax when I bought my trailer, so I owe the state of South Dakota some tax. <clears throat> Not a big deal. Still cheaper than it would have been uh, registering in most other places. But it's generally, they say, give them 7 to 10 days to get the plates. And from some of the people I've heard around here, it's 8 days or more that they've had to wait. Now, maybe their situation was a little bit different or more complicated than mine, but... That means if you're coming here and you expect to get plates right away, it's not going to happen. So the whole domicile setup thing is kind of a mess right now, and it's a waiting game. Other than that, I did do a little upgrade on the trailer. I replaced the shower head. The original shower head was absolute trash. I mean, completely worthless. I don't even know why they, they even bother putting those things in there. So garbage. So I got um, an Oxygenix Fury RV on sale at Camping World for, I don't know, $34, $35. Completely. This functions like a, a shower should function now. Un unbelievable. And it saves water compared to the other shower head. Okay, I picked up a couple items to do a minor upgrade in the, the bathroom. The shower head here is trash. This actually is two and a half gallons a minute, but you might as well have just drilled holes in PVC. This, this thing is just terrible. I've heard a lot of good things about this particular um, Oxygenetics shower head uh, this one is rv model so i picked it up at camping world outside of rapid city hopefully it'll work and then i found um, a little dispenser that goes on the side of the shower basically this shower is so narrow 
that it's very easy to bump these things and knock them off and I already broke the, the lid off the um, so so <clears throat> hopefully this will replace the bottles on the shelf and I won't have that problem anymore all right so the uh, shower head installation was pretty straightforward basically these hose just screw on screw off there's a washer in there so be careful not to lose it uh, I removed the old bracket and installed this one it's got two installation options adhesive backing or screws I did a hybrid I used the screws from the old bracket because I knew they weren't going to cause any damage I think the ones that came with this were a little bit longer and I used the adhesive this just reinforces it a little bit um, so let's take a look at what we got here so there's a dramatic improvement in water pressure and it supposedly uses only two gallons per minute versus the other one at two and a half yeah that's that's a significant improvement and it gives you a couple options as well as a cutoff and these things never are a hundred percent but that's pretty good I'm pleased with how that part works this just tightens up and loosens up to adjust this and the angle that you would like that's definitely better now let's see about getting this guy on the wall all right this re part requires placing some silicone in here along with the he adhesive backing to secure onto the wall okay the adhesives peeled and uh, the silicone's on and I'm getting ready to stick it on the wall so I'll just stick it on and firmly push it in place and you'll see some of the silicone ooze through the holes all right and there's the dispenser installed uh, it says give the silicone 24 hours to cure before you fill the dispenser up so that's what i'll do and uh yeah that's going to make a big improvement in the shower for not much money probably 60 or so dollars Funny thing, the cat, Coda, uh, I, I adopted her from, you know, an animal shelter. She came with the name Coda, K-O-T-A, which is also the name of the local TV station here, K-O-T-A. Yeah, whatever. Other problem I've been having is the whole internet and Wi-Fi. I have not been able to get a Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, it's just sold out everywhere I tried getting some in, in Denver wasn't happening I tried in um, actually Woodland Park Colorado didn't happen um, and so I decided I, I didn't check when I was in Casper but here sold out I, I mean it's just it's been a real hassle because I don't have um, internet or Wi-Fi unless I'm at a campground with full hookups and so it's kind of a pain to do uploads and all of that stuff and actually planning i can't believe how much planning this takes and how much you have to rely on the internet you know to do this stuff so it's made some of that a little challenging the other thing i would recommend anybody that's starting out do a bunch of planning as far as where you're going to stay you need to be planning a week or so out to avoid a lot of problems I'm generally have never done anything like that I just go and you know whatever it's a little bit problematic here um, and it's gonna get worse as I head east because there's not a lot of alternatives you know out in the western part of the country there's a lot of public lands that you're capable of camping on but in the east that's not the case so uh, as I head east I'm gonna have to step up my game but now I'm kind of stuck in a waiting game here in South Dakota so I was originally planning on being in the state for you know maybe a week or so and I'm gonna be here at least two weeks maybe a little longer so while I'm waiting I'm gonna go to a couple different areas and you know camp and, and check some stuff out <clears throat> the other bad thing Pennington County where Rapid City and everything is um, they've kind of been experiencing an uptick in the whole COVID cases and 
you know, that's of course due to tourists coming in and out, you know, coming from all over the country. Um, it's, you know, it's not terrible. There's not that many people in South Dakota, but it's a little bit of a concern. Um, there's no mandates or anything around here, so it's hit and miss. Some stores are requiring you to wear masks. Others don't care. It's just kind of all over the place right here. Uh, the bad thing is it wouldn't have a lot of the medical facilities if things got really bad here. It, it, you just normally don't need it. So I don't think they're extremely well prepared for a major outbreak. And hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, for the most part, you can do you know, plenty of social distancing and not really come into you know, a ton of contact. If you have to go into a store, you, you know, wear a mask, whatever. Uh, the downside is some of the, uh, you know, the more tourist kind of attractions, they could be kind of a, a bad spot um, because those are the people, in my opinion, would most likely be infected and most likely be spreading it. So your places like Mount Rushmore and stuff like that are probably a little bit more risky than, you know, your average spot in Rapid City. I've been kind of debating about whether the name, you know, the truck and trailer, and I uh, was joking around, you know, that the, because the truck is silver, just calling it silver, you know, as in high ho silver in a way, and then I could just call my cat Gato, and uh, that'll be my sidekick. <laughs> But I don't know. But it's the trailer I was uh, kind of wondering about. And um, I'll show a little clip here. Of, it's got waterfowl on it. And I can't really tell if they're canvas backs or redheads. So I was kind of thinking of calling it the little redhead um, because of the, the duck. Um, but I don't know. So it, it's, it's kind of a long standing joke, you know, with me, the little redhead. Um, so I don't know. It might work, might not. So far, I still haven't figured out a good solution to laundry. I don't know if the laundromats here are actually really open or if it's drop-off only. Uh, my trailer is not big enough to put in a, you know, a regular washer. Uh, so here's here's what I'm finding on the road that's really challenging. So a lot of places stores are not open. Restaurants are takeout only. So if you're traveling and you you know, think you're going to stop at a fast food place, it's not going to happen in a lot of areas because you're not going to be able to go through the drive through towing a trailer or if you're in a class A or something like that because of the height clearance. So you are limited, obviously, of, of where you can go because of your height clearance, your length and all of that stuff. Availability of things that are open is really hit and miss. So unless you're going into the convenience store to get something, you're better off packing a bunch of food with you to make sure you have stuff. Kind of sum up what you should be looking for before you head out is to make sure, like if you're going to change your domicile, that the things are running the way you think they are. So any of the videos that you've watched in the past about how things worked probably aren't working that way now. So verify before you go if things are functioning, things are open. Um, otherwise, you could be stuck in an area a lot longer than you're planning on. Uh, the second thing is be prepared to not be able to stop at any restaurants or things like that to get food. So pack some stuff um, to make sure that you're covered. Gas stations have all been open. There hasn't been a problem there. So convenience kind of stores, truck stops, things like that, those are all open. Those are options. The other thing would be... Um, just know that there's shortages of various things all over the place. So things like hand sanitizer, masks, cleaning products. A lot of places are on short supply or completely out of those. 
So if you have the opportunity, pick some of that stuff up before you leave. Same thing is probably true with uh, RV toilet paper. So another big tip you often hear is to create a checklist for kind of set up, take down before you leave. And that's a good idea because it's a lot more steps than you realize to set up and tear down. Every rig's gonna be a little bit different. But the other thing to keep in mind, there's an order of operations in which things have to occur. Because if you do things out of order, you can break things. <laughs> One of the things I did without thinking was I started messing around with the tongue jack before lifting the stabilizers on the trailer. Now nothing happened, I, I saw it quickly enough, but if I wasn't paying attention, which I kind of wasn't, <laughs> um, you know, you could have severely damaged something or broken your stabilizer jacks off. Uh, there's a lot of little things like that that you could forget and cause yourself a bunch of problems. So make sure when you create your checklist that you do it in the order that things need to happen and stick to that order because no matter what every single time I have forgotten something something you know it's all been my except one uh, I somehow lost the lever arm to my trailer hitch but you know I, I have still have no idea what I did how I did it but I, I did that um, when I left Wyoming I left one of the windows open um, the shade was down but I drove from Wyoming all the way into Nebraska before I noticed that the you know the window was down and I walk around the trailer every single time usually twice before I take off and I, I didn't see it the other thing I've left the vents open on the roof generally not a, a major problem but there's a potential for them to be damaged that's one kind of have to do a walk around on the inside setting up one time I didn't realize that an empty box had shifted and it actually cracked off a piece of molding on the slide that's just how cheap these things are built but um, yeah you really have to pay attention to uh, <laughs> everything the single biggest tip I'd have before trying to do a big trip is to get everything tested on your RV if you're fortunate enough to be able to do that at home that's great I didn't have that luxury and I actually had no options of testing it without actually going out camping and finding a, a you know a leaky fresh water tank could absolutely destroy your plans if you were going to go dry camping and uh, you know you run out of water in two days without even using it so um, make sure things are functioning if there's something wrong you know you can fix it or you can try to get it fixed and then go out on your adventure um, it's going to save you a lot of headaches because pretty much everybody says all the trailers have a warranty issue straight from the factory I don't know why such garbage is allowed you know to go out and people put up with it but that's the reality and it doesn't matter how much you paid for your RV I paid a premium for this thing because it was supposed to be good quality and it had a major malfunction of a basic fundamental system in its design I, I don't know how you have leaky tanks on RVs in this day and age from the factory that is one of the most basic things but hey you know that's quality for you um, so do yourself a huge favor test everything out before you take a major road trip try to find a campground close to home um, test it out in your yard you know whatever and you, you, you know save yourself a lot of trouble hopefully I don't have any other major issues so far everything else seems to be functioning all right it's just you know kind of general build issues that are you know it's poor construction um, and it's just a quality issue with RVs partially due to weight partially due to you know the average RV um, is only used about 28 days a year based on a survey I read so when you think about that they don't have to be very good to last one month a year and 
you know, I don't know how long people tend to keep their RV, probably only a few years before they trade it in. So when you think about it, the average RV is probably only used, I don't know, what, 90 times before it's traded in. So, you know, I think, you know, manufacturers realize that and they don't bother putting in really good parts. I'll probably do a, a tour overview and highlight a lot of the issues that have showed up on this in a later video, but definitely do yourself a favor, test things out before you go anywhere for an extended stay. And wow, that's update from Rapid City, South Dakota, actually Box Elder. And uh, next video will be from, uh, I think, Nebraska. Um, and then I am still working on the general South Dakota one. Uh, so thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.